Assalamualaikum and a good day to everyone. So this is the first chapter of thermodynamic two XG. So in this video, I'm going to explain the what is XG. Okay, this is the content of this chapter, which is XG work potential of energy, reversible work and irreversibility, second law efficiency, XG change of of system, XG transfer by heat, work and mass. The decrease of XG principle, XG balance, closed and open system. XG, work potential of energy. XG in general definition. What is an XG? XG is an amount of energy that can be extracted from an energy source. Okay, so we have a uh, water fall from the high end which has the highest potential energy and will convert it into kinetic energy so at the top of it we can name it as a energy source and let's say we put a water turbine at the bottom of the waterfall so from this energy source we have useful energy and also wasted energy let's say we convert the useful energy into useful work so this useful work is the xg and it is the availability of energy so xg is an uh, is a property that used to determine the useful work potential which is the maximum of a given amount of energy at some specified state let's say this is the energy source or the total energy that available but from this total energy, only a part of it, we can extract it, which is the useful energy, and we call it, it as a XG. The unavailable energy, or the energy that we cannot extract it, uh, uh, wasted, and that is not the XG. So XG will determine the quality of the energy from the available total energy. So to further understand it, we will compare the work potential of different energy sources or systems. Let's say we have a 100 kg of coal and then we also have a 100 kg of charcoal. Okay, So how do we know which one will produce more work if the source is used to run a system? If both of these sources we use separately, which one will give the maximum? So. Let's say we try to power a steam uh, turbine uh, train. So to uh, to know this, we should use the XG analysis. Terminology in XG definition. Let's say we have a hot potato system, and the black board rectangular border is the surroundings. We also have the immediate surrounding, which is at the seventy degrees Celsius and also the environment at the 25 degrees celsius so what is the immediate surroundings immediate surrounding is the surrounding that are affected by the process happen around the hot potatoes or in the hot potatoes and what is the environment environment is the surrounding that are not affected by the process which are happen in the hot potato and it is immediate surrounding so you need to clearly identify which is which so let's say we have a system uh, a piston uh, system piston device system at uh, the initial uh, velocity is zero and the uh, elevation also at the zero uh, but it has an air trap inside it which has 100 degrees celsius and 200 kpa so in a uh, xg will we will identify or this initial state will be specified and it's not a variable and the environment temperature is at the 25 degrees celsius and pressure at 100 kpa let's say the process from uh, initial state we go to the final state the air temperature reduced to 80 degrees celsius and the pressure is 100 kPa and the works is done 
to the system, uh, to the surrounding, which is the environment, and the piston move upwards. Let's say this process can be uh, written back to the initial state. So this is called as a reversible process. To get the maximum energy from this, the system should turn into, should change into the environment pressure and also temperature, which is the air trapped inside the piston device cylinder is at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa, which is the equilibrium state with the environment. So if we achieve this final state, the final state when the system is equilibrium with the environment. So the environment condition, which is the temperature and also pressure, is the that state. So that state is a system that is in thermodynamic equilibrium with the environment. Let's say we can change from this that state into the initial state, which we consider this process as reversible. So we will get the maximum output or the XG, useful energy of the system. So XG is the maximum possible work as it undergoes a reversible process from the specified initial state to the state of its environment, which is the dead state. XG for mechanical energy. Mechanical energy, kinetic and potential energy, and based on the first law of thermodynamic. Based on the first law of thermodynamic, energy in, which is the E in or initial, should equal to the energy out or the final energy. So let's say we consider a system which has a Z as the elevation. And initially, there is a cyclist at the top of the hill and it moves downwards and reach the final state which at the bottom of the hill. And in this system, we consider without friction. So at the top of the system uh, or the hill, of the hill, the cyclist has the highest potential energy, which is the PE equal to mgz. And in the middle of it, it uh, the cyclist has both uh, energy, which is the potential and kinetic energy. And at the bottom of it, the cyclist has the maximum uh, kinetic energy, uh, which is the uh, 1 over 2 times mass and also velocity with the power of 2. So based on the first law, since it does not have any other energy, so the potential energy which is at the top of the hill should equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill. And from this case, 100% of the energy from the kinetic energy can be changed into useful works. So maximum works or energy potential uh, which ignore losses. Okay, so in the second case, uh, we consider with a friction and we put it the friction force as the WF. So in this case, it also complies with the first law, but we should include the friction forces in the first law equation. So the potential energy should minus the friction force and then it will equal to the potential and uh, kinetic energy at the bottom of the uh, of the system. So in this case, less than 100% energy from the kinetic and potential energy can change into useful works, which is due to the losses. So less work or energy potential consider as losses. So in this case, the first uh, case, which is no friction, is the XG, uh, whereas uh, the second one is not the XG. XG is the maximum useful works. So from this case, we can calculate the uh, potential energy from the uh, potential energy equation, which is shown at the bottom of this slide. We also can calculate the kinetic and XG. Same with the equation of the uh, kinetic energy. Uh, and then based on the second law uh, of thermodynamic mentioned that not 100% of heat will produce works. XG for heat energy. First law of thermodynamic, which is energy in should equal to the energy out. And for the second law of thermodynamic, not 100% heat produce works. So we have a system, a piston device uh, system, 
where we have a heat source that supply heat to the system initially the air inside the piston is uh, 30 degrees Celsius and pressure at the 100 kPa when the heat is supplied to the system the system will do a work which is work output and it push the since it push the uh, cylinder so the air temperature will increase into 200 degrees Celsius and the pressure will increase to 150 kPa with no heat losses so and then the system will return back to the heat sink uh, to complete the cycle we we'll return back to the initial condition where the air inside it will turn into 30 degrees Celsius and the uh, pressure will turn into 100 kPa and here we have a QL heat uh, transfer to the heat sink and we consider the system a simple the system where QH is equal to QL plus the work net and here let's say the heat supply to the system to the piston cylinder is 100 kilojoule and the heat sink is the 30 kilojoule so the work net is the 70 kilojoule this is for the uh, best case or maximum uh, system uh, and the efficiency is equal to 70 percent but in the actual case uh, the same uh, system with the heat source and QH is supplied to the system uh, piston device system and with, with heat losses and uh, previously the system with without heat losses so we have Q loss although it has a work output and it also has uh, a bit of heat is losses to the system and then when it goes back to the heat sink or the return back to the initial condition the QL which is the heat uh, return to the heat sink and we have a uh, work in so in this case we have QH is equal to QL plus Q loss plus W net which is the W work out minus W in uh, in this case QH is 100 kJ still the same with the initial uh, with the first case and the QL is 30 kJ but in this case we have 5 kJ of losses and the net work will be 65 kJ in this case the efficiency is reduced to 65 percent so between these two cases the case one has maximum works or energy potential which ignore the losses whereas system for the case two lower work or energy potential which involve losses so in this case the first case is the xg which is the maximum useful work available from the system and system b is the uh, energy which consider the losses so xg has the maximum uh, network output and also has the maximum efficiency of the system this is the end of part one for chapter one so thank you for your attention and hopefully you understand my explanation and hope you enjoy this video